The environmental element of civil engineering has grown dramatically over recent years and will continue to do so. Geosynthetics play a role in helping engineers protect the environment. In some applications, the geosynthetic materials are critical to the success of the structure. Common environmental structures include landfills or waste containment structures, erosion control in channels or road projects, coastal structures, or even sports infrastructure. A civil engineer cannot ignore the environmental aspects of their project as increasing regulation makes environmental concerns a core dimension of all projects. A landfill can use multiple geosynthetic materials, including drainage layers and lining systems. Here is a roll of geosynthetic clay liner being installed as a part of the lining system to minimize the leakage of leachate, or liquid waste, into the surrounding groundwater. The drainage of sports fields is always important, and here is a geosynthetic drainage material being used in a new international sporting stadium. Getting the water away as quickly as possible allows a better playing surface for the players. With urban development around coastal areas making communities less tolerant to coastal erosion, coastal structures such as foreshore revetments, groins or breakwaters are important to local residents or communities. Geosynthetic solutions offer engineers an alternative to traditional materials such as rock, sheet piling, wood or concrete. Water is now recognised as a valuable resource and for geosynthetic lining systems for farm dams, irrigation channels and regional communities. There are two main sources of water loss within a water storage. Seepage into the soil or evaporation. Geosynthetic lining systems offer a cost-effective way to reduce the seepage of the water into the surrounding soil. In building, geosynthetics often provide valuable solutions wherever soil and water meet. Many buildings utilize geosynthetic solutions for basement waterproofing, water harvesting, site drainage, retaining walls, and landscape integration. The building industry, which can be viewed as vertical construction as compared to the relatively horizontal construction in engineering construction, use geosynthetics where soil and water meet. Here we see a geosynthetic lining system being installed to waterproof the basement car park of a high-rise apartment block. We need to waterproof it to prevent staining on the inside face of the car park as well as increasing the durability of the concrete walls. Water harvesting has become an integral part of building projects now as the runoff from roads or car park areas can then be used for watering gardens. Geosynthetics are used as a part of the lining system to ensure the water collected within the buried system does not seep into the surrounding soil. Retaining walls are a common feature of a building project, either to make the best use of available land or as an architectural feature. Geosynthetics are used as reinforcement or drainage elements within retaining walls. In this section we saw just some of the many ways that geosynthetics can solve difficult problems in different civil engineering disciplines. In the following sections we will see the key functions of geosynthetics and the design issues that they address. Geosynthetics introduce new and more cost-effective ways to deal with age-old design challenges. For the sake of simplicity in this mini-lecture, we will look at the five main functions performed by geosynthetic materials, namely containment, drainage, filtration, 
separation and reinforcement. There are other functions, but these five are the most common in civil engineering applications. Geosynthetics are used to help prevent migration of liquids, gases, soils and sediments. For example, a geosynthetic lining system in a landfill minimizes leakage of hazardous leachate and gases into the surrounding environment. Design engineers need to make decisions around permeability, strength and durability in relation to the particular project requirements, including any environmental guidelines or regulations. It is worth noting that no product is completely waterproof. Even thick concrete walls have a leakage rate and geosynthetics are no different. However, due to their very low leakage rate or low permeability, geosynthetics are widely used in containment structures. Design of a waste containment structure can be complex and engineers need to consider the leakage rate their structure will permit. The material within the structure, such as decomposing waste, mine tailings or water, as well as any strength issues, such as shear forces imposed on geosynthetic layers on steep slopes, and the design life of the structure. Generally, there are environmental guidelines that govern the design of waste containment structures. Here we see an image of the geosynthetic layers in a waste containment structure where a plastic geomembrane and a geosynthetic clay liner are used in combination to provide a lining system with very low leakage rates. The installation process and sequence requires careful thought to ensure that no damage to the layers occur during installation. Here is an example of a water storage structure where a geosynthetic layer is used to contain the water and minimize seepage of the water into the surrounding soil. Geosynthetics are often used to collect and transport fluids. Example 1. A rigid flat pipe drain encapsulated in a permeable geotextile inserted at road edges to collect and dispose of groundwater. Note, not surface water in this instance. Example 2. For drainage behind a bridge abutment, a sheet drain can be installed to reduce the hydrostatic pressure as well as reducing the required thickness of the draining gravel. Design engineers need to make decisions regarding the drainage characteristics of the products such as the permeability of the geotextile, the flow capacity of the sheet drain, etc.